So let's rank all the movies I watched for the first time for the month of June 2024. Big Days! They don't give me rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual Bear Note with the Big D. Back with another ranking. Today I'm going to give you my June 2024 first time watches. Now I watched 18 films, and I, this time I made sure not to miss any and what have you. I almost did with the read watches, but that's coming up a little, little way wrong. But for now, I'm going to get this out of the way and give you 18 films. Now, of course, I will talk about them briefly as I show them to you one at a time. As you'll see me come back on, unlike the rewatches ranking. Alright, that about covers it. If you're ready, let's start this ranking. Sit back, relax, and here we go. Coming in at number 18 is... Serial Mom from 1994. Now, this is kind of an odd film in my view. It's a black comedy with satire in it. And it stars Kathleen Turner as the titular character and Sam Waters as her husband. It also features Ricky Lake and Matthew Lillard pre-Scream. And, well, a bunch of others and what have you. This film's absolutely kind of nuts and what have you, but... It did get some decent response, but it unfortunately bombed at the box office. It just about appears about one who appears to be an unassuming upper class, upper middle class housewife who is secretly a serial killer and kills people over trivial slights or offenses. Strange film, but it's a, it's fine and what have you. I'll have to rewatch it again. Maybe I'll change my mind for it. Serial Mom, not too bad. I thought I'd try to watch it before I watch Dead Meets Kill County the last month of Mother's Day. Well, now coming in at number 17 is... The Computer War Tennis Shoes from 1995. Now, this is a made-for-TV remake of the 1969 film that had Kurt Russell in it. Now, as you saw, that's, this is a remake with Kurt Cameron, fresh off after Growing Pains. Um, the full movie of this can be seen on YouTube and not on Disney+. Plus. This film is, well, it's alright. It's just not as good as the original, though, but it does have a few slight differences. Unlike how um, the um, first film involved uh, like um, gambling and what have you, and what have you, it's about, it actually, it's man tennis is a, well, someone who's a hacker. But I will tell you who it is. If you really want to find out, see the movie. As I've said already, the full movie's on YouTube. You can check it out there. Now, coming in at number 16 is... Trigger Warning. Now, this is a... New Netflix film that came up um, more recently with Jessica Alba. This is kind of like Rambo almost, but except it involves like chicken, what have you. You can check out my review of this in a mini reviews that I did not so long ago. Well, I liked her performance in this, but this was just kind of a you know, kind of a mixed bag for me. But it did have a few action pad moments, not as much as I hoped for in what have you. But Trigger Warning was. Well, fine little movie, though. And coming in at number 15 is... Father's Day from 1997. This film unfortunately bombed at the box office. It's why it had a pretty good pair of leading, character, leading actors in Billy Crystal and the late great Robin Williams. They're playing these two guys who are going after this boy who... They, they want to know which one of them is the real father to the boy. And boy, again, there's so many craziness and what, craziness and what have you, weird, weird and crazy stuff, or, or something like that, along the way on this little road trip. It's just crazy and what have you. Still, I had some fun with it, though. I'll definitely need to review that someday. But from what I've seen of Father's Day, I think it's just... But I feel like this is kind of an underrated film, considering it was a big disappointment at the box office. But anywho, 
Father's Day. It was fun, though. With Next up at number 14 is... Monkey Man, which was released earlier this year. Well, maybe not earlier, earlier. It was just released back in April. And I'm going to say this turned out to... This didn't quite turn out to be like I hoped for. I hoped this would have been a whole lot action-packed. It did turn out to be action-packed for some parts of my but not a whole lot in it, though. I did like Dan Patel in his performance as the Tidra character, and also as director, since this was his directorial debut. But I will say, it was it was fine, why have you? This wasn't quite close to being as good as John Wick, though, in my book. But hey, you have to take my word for it. Monkey Man was not too bad of a film. Uh, I did include that in a main reviews vid. I am um, that include Trigger Warning and the next film that's coming up. So coming in at number thirteen is Hitman, which was released last year but is now streaming on Netflix. Now this. Boy, this is another film I was kind of a little mixed on. Well, not 100 Timbers in mixed on, but still, I thought it had a few fun moments. Didn't quite, but it just didn't quite give me as many laughs as I hoped for. They did have some twists and turns and what have you. I do think it was pretty good, and of course, we're having Glenn Powell after recently doing Anyone But You. I'd say he was pretty good in that film. Again, as I've said already, it's including in the mini reviews bit I did along for this along with Monkey Man and Trigger Warning. Check that out. And if you like it, check this film out. Hitman's not too bad of a film. I kind of did like it, though. Next at number 12 is... Eat My Dust from 1976. This film is absolutely crazy. It stars Ron Howard, and well, it's a about um a it's a conflict about a conflict between a sheriff and his rebellious son over a stolen car. So this is sort of like a precursor. Well, this was released in '76, just a year before Smokey and the Bandit even came out. But I'm gonna say it really turned out to be a real crazy one when this. Sheriff's son steals a race car of a professional driver, and the sheriff forms a motorized posse to recover it. Yeah, it has some pretty good performances, even from um, Ron's brother, Clint, you probably know that name, and even Dave Madden from the Partridge family. Paul Bartell's in this, you probably see him in various B movies. Yeah, and of course, Roger Corman produced this. May he rest in peace. The full movie is currently available on YouTube. It's also available on Tubi and other streaming services. You need, you may want to check this one out. This film was absolutely, really, really crazy. I might review this sometime down the road. And coming in at number 11 is... Above the Law from 1988. Now, this film stars Steven Seagal in his film debut, who also was a producer in the film. It also has some pretty good stars, including Pam Greer and Sharon Stone. Now, my friend Tristan, aka the, po the Porch Man, uh, recommended this film to me. And I watched it on Tubi, and let me tell you, it was pretty darn awesome and what have you. It was really cool. And, well, currently it's considered as a classic 1980s film. Of course, it's about an ex-CIA agent and Akio specialist and a Chicago policeman who discover a conspiracy upon investigating the mysterious shipment of military explosive seats from a narcotics dealer. Wow, this film turned out to be pretty cool and what have you. Now, I have yet to review any Seagal films, but that could change sometime. Maybe... Next month, details to follow. But anyway, above the law, it was pretty good. Now for the top ten. Number ten is...
the bike riders. Now, now this film was originally supposed to come to us last year, but got delayed and got switched to another movie studio. This film was a pretty good film based on, well, kind of based on, well, not based on, but inspired by the book of the same name. And it does have a pretty good cast, which includes Joey Comer, Austin Butler, who I liked his performance. Tom Hardy was good. Michael Shannon. Yeah, this film was just so awesome. I like the saying, and why have you, and what can I say? This was just such an incredible film. Who knows how well this could turn out. Maybe it'll get nominated for some awards, even though considering it would have got it, but the by getting the way. But I've already done a spoiler free review of this. Check it out if you haven't seen it. But anyway, I really thought this film was pretty good. And what can I say? It was just so awesome. Bike riders. Go check it out if it's still at your theater. Next up at number nine is Captain Ron from 1992. Now, I seem to recall seeing some of this before a long time ago, but this is the first time I've seen the film in its entirety. This film is just so crazy and what have you. Of course, Carb Russell plays the titular character with a quirky personality and a checkered past. Anyway, and it also has Martin Shore as the patriarch of... Family who hires Ron to sail a yacht through the Caribbean with him and his family. Wow, this film is just so funny and what have you. I am going to say it, it did okay and what have you, but, but got this though. Anyway, but I feel like. Russell did an exceptionally good job, and Martin Short was good as well. The rest of the cast wasn't too bad either. So, Captain Ron is a pretty fun little film. I might review that sometime sooner. We'll find out. It's just such a fun film. I watched it on Tubi. I think you'll like it if you give it a try. Next up at number eight is... Dead Stalker 2. Or Death Stalker 2 Duel of the Titans from 1987. Oh my gosh. After I saw these on Tubi, I didn't. I had to check out what they were like and what have you. And so I then I went to Tubi to check them out. We'll see where the first one winds up in a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to say this. Like the first film, this was a real blast and what have you. Although I did have um, another person playing the titular character. Anyway, it was also the last sword and sorcery movie that Roger Corman produced in Argentina during the 80s. But anyway, I liked the performance that um, was given by um, John Terleski, who played um, the titular character. Rick Hill played him in the first one. But that was so awesome. Monique Gabrielle is so hot in this. This had a lot of hot gals in it. I'm going to say this was just so incredible. I definitely need to review this film. It also has a pretty good score as well. Especially with a great opening theme. So, anyway. Dead Soccer 2. It's pretty darn awesome. Definitely. And coming in at number 7 is... Horizon, an American Saga, Chapter 1. Now, this is the first installment of a big event Kevin Costner's had in the works for some time. Unfortunately, this hasn't been doing too well at the box office, and it's probably due to underperform. And as I've said in my spoiler free review, I wish this film the best of luck. If this film blows it, let's hope for the best part 2 does better than this one. While it does have a pretty good cast and what have you, which, who could go wrong with that? This film needs to pull in some steam and get dudes just a little bit better. We hope for the best this will try to rake in some money. Or else Warner Bros. is due to have another big disappointment on their hands, just like they have with one film, which is still ahead, which I was not happy with its performance. But anyway, Horizon and American Saga Chapter 1, I thought it was good. Kevin Costner, good in his performance, just like he was. With direction, it had a big all-star cast, way too many people named, but 
They were all very good, though. Now, coming in, number six is... Deathstalker from 1983. Oh, my gosh. This film was blooming awesome. And I have to say, it was just so incredible. It was the first of ten films that Roger Corman, again, rest in peace, produced in Argentina during the 1980s. If I mentioned the sequel was one, but he did lots of others. Don't know too many, though. But even so, I thought this film was so incredible. A battle warrior who's sent by a witch on a quest to find a chalice, an amulet, and a sword, two of which are held by a sorcerer. Anyway, this film's just so wild. Rick Hill, I do like his performance as a titular character. It has Barbie Benton, Bernard Erhard, and Lana Clarkson. They're pretty good. And But I've got one, you know, this has lots of hot chicks galore. You can be sure that and well, I better not say because I don't want to arouse any attention and what have you, you know. But Deathstalker is awesome. The film's currently available on numerous services. It's on Tubi, it's on Prime Video, it's on Shudder. If you haven't seen this film, I would recommend you check out the Sword and Sorcery film. I think you'll really like it. But I'll review it sometime or sooner, though. And coming in at number five is... The Long Kiss Goodnight from 1996. Now, I have never actually taken the time to see this film, but after watching it on two before they dropped it, I must admit this film was blooming awesome. Directed by Rainy Harlan, who of course directed um, Cliffhanger and Die Hard 2, I believe. Yeah. And several others. He also directed the first time on Elm Street film I watched, number four, Dream Master. Yeah. Anyway, I do like the performances. We got Gina Davis, Samuel Jackson. Yeah, it was really cool. I only seen a tiny bit of this show, and that was in a, just a little something in the Final Destination. But after finally checking this out, I realized I have missed out on something. The excuse me, that was bloody intense. Definitely. So I'll definitely need to review this one as well down the road. The Long Kiss Goodnight, I think it was pretty good. The next at number four is... Godzilla Minus One from last year in 2023. This film was an unexpected big hit for a Godzilla flick from Japan. Now, I've never watched that many much of a Godzilla film that came direct from Japan, but after this one, after I read this one, got so much good response, this film just recently came to Netflix earlier last month, and I thought I'd check it out, and they do have it in English dub, and I watched it, and I must admit, it was awesome. I know I haven't done a spoiler-free review of it yet, but that might be coming up later on down the road, since it's not yet been close to a year since it came out, so... It's still okay to do a spoiler-free review. Anyway, I found this to be blooming awesome. Well, even though I did like the latest Godzilla and Kong flick from earlier this year, but since this one I just saw, this one was just even more awesome. Definitely. I must admit, Godzilla Minus One looked like such a monster piece. <laughs> little joke there. <laughs> Okay, enough said. And coming in at number three is... Furiosa, Mad Max Saga. Now, of course, I've already reviewed this film, but it's not done as well as the other Mad Max films. This film's already become a humiliating failure for Warner Brothers. I can't understand why the hell it's... It didn't do as well as we hoped for, considering this got a lot of good reviews. Uh, shame, shame, shame. I know sometimes prequels can't do as well as uh, well the big ones in Miami, but this film does is pretty awesome. I don't care what how well it did, so 
Yeah, you, you get the point. Anyway, Anya Taylor-Joy was so incredible as Furiosa. Chris Hemsworth was really good. I think everyone in this film was really good. Which just could have done better. But we'll hope for the best they'll give Mad Max in their shot. We'll see what happens when that comes up sooner or later if we ever hear about it. Okay, and for the final two, this was a tough decision to make. We got the biggest film of the year so far and a really good action pack flick coming out. So coming in, number two is... Bad Boys, Ride or Die. Now, since I enjoyed the last film so much, this kind of wasn't quite close to as good as the last film, but it still managed to pull off some good ones in my view with its humor, its action pack thrills, and all that jazz, just like what we got from the other films. The same people who worked on the first, the, not the first, the last film was back to direct and what have you. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence definitely still have what it takes to play the roles of the titular characters. This was just so incredible. And so action packed. Anyway, Bad Boys Ride or Die, I think, was just an awesome action pack flick. Definitely. But if that's number two, number one, my number one, first time watching June 2024, this will be a wee shock. It's already the most popular film this year so far. And that is none other than... Inside Out 2... The film that has already gone over, made over a billion at the box office in less than a month. Faster than any other film to this day since Barbie. Oh my gosh, this film proved to be a more fun flick than I had even hoped for. Usually, I never thought another sequel would be as, well, good and what have you. Well, I still much like the first film. Just a wee bit more than this one, but this comes close, though. I liked all the new emotions and what have you. And especially um, Anxiety, who is absolutely nuts. So, yeah, I forgot that to mention in my review, she's played, voiced by Maya Hawk, who happens to be the daughter to Ethan Hawk. Yeah. Oh, I must say, she does an exceptionally good job. All the others, old and new, they are still good as before. So, anyway, this was just so incredible. Do you think we deserve to get our one? That I can't answer. Sorry. But anyway, Inside Out 2 is just wow. Already tearing a path up. Has already put Pixar back on the map. After all these years of having humiliating disappointments and having three films being on, well failing to come until earlier this year after being on Disney Plus for these last couple of years. But anyway, if you haven't seen Inside Out 2, I think you would enjoy this. This was definitely really, really good. So that's going to do it. What did you think of this ranking? What are some of the flicks you watched for the first time in June 2024? Give me your top one, your top three, or top five. Leave them for me in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button. Feel free to subscribe and share with your friends as well. And hopefully you can be a part of the Big D Nation. And next time, I'm well, later on, I will be giving you my rewatches ranking. So I'm going to try and shoot them back to back. You know, well... Well, maybe not back to back, but you'll you'll see when this comes up. So anyway, thank you for watching my first time watch this ranking. And if you liked it, check out these other well well check out the top three films. The upper left hand corner is my review of Inside Out 2. All these are spoiler free. The upper right hand corner is my review of Bad Boys Ride or Die. And the bottom left hand corner is my review of Furiosa. In the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.